we just started the recording. So um, we've got some great visas for you today and some great hosts. Uh, today, we're joined by Preeti Loda and Agata Ketterick. They're both uh, Tableau Public Ambassadors and myself, Eric Howard, uh, I'm a Tableau Users Group Ambassador. Our guests today are Olivia DiGiacomo, Dennis Cow, Jessica Moon, and Emily DePadua. Hey, Olivia, how are you today? Good, thank you. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Preethi will be hosting Dennis and Jessica. Hello, everyone. And Agata will be the host for Emily and color studies. So quick review of the agenda. We're gonna have a Tableau product update by Olivia DiGiacomo, the Data Fam 100 review by Dennis and Jessica, the color studies by Emily DePadua, and then we'll finish around 115 with a Tableau swag drawing and some Tableau news. So let's get started. Emily or, or Olivia, are you ready to go? I'm ready. All right, Olivia is the Tableau Public Product Marketing Manager for Tableau Public at Salesforce. Her passions include bringing new and exciting features to market and supporting the data fam community in achieving their goals. Today, she's going to fill us in on all the great things the Tableau Public team has been working on and a new Tableau public challenge to look forward to in November. In November. So good afternoon, Olivia, take it away. Awesome, thank you. Um, so I'm just gonna share my screen really quickly if that's okay. All right, let's see. All right, can everyone see okay? Perfect. Okay, so as Eric mentioned, hey everyone, thank you so much for having me here today. Um, for those of you I haven't met, my name is Olivia DiGiacomo and I'm the Product Marketing Manager for Tableau Public. Um, today I'm excited to share with you some of the latest updates we're bringing to public. I'm going to start off with a little recap on our most recent launches and then go through some of the features that are coming soon. And then I'll share a new Data Plus Movies Challenge we have coming up next month. So let's dive in. Um, so for the first cap for you all is the Hire Me Viz. And hopefully you guys know or are already about the Hire Me button on your Tableau Public Profile. And if you haven't, I recommend you flip it on after this meeting in your profile settings. This is a really great feature that allows you to indicate to potential employers or hiring managers that your Tableau data skills are available for hire. And so when we first launched the Hire Me button a few years ago, we didn't really have an easy way for employers to search for talent with the Hire Me button enabled. So we worked with an incredible solutions engineer, Peter Janssen, to create this visualization that actually allows employers to search for users that have the Hire Me button enabled. And they can also filter them based on location and skill set. Um, so definitely check this out if you haven't already. We've recently been promoting this a bunch on social, and you can also find it featured on our Tableau Public blog. I also want to to touch on some of the latest we've made to search. And so we know that there are a variety of different ways to search for inspiration um, or specific biz types. And we want to make sure that when you are searching on Tableau Public, you're getting more meaningful results. And so when you visit our search page, you'll see we now offer the ability to sort visits by relevance, view count, and recently published. And you can filter visits by downloadable or copyable. And I think this filter is a really great way for anyone who's trying to learn through reverse engineering, um, you know, an existing visualization on Tableau Public that another author has created. If you know what you're looking for, you can also search for authors, and these authors can be sorted by relevance, follower count, and recently active. And you can also filter them by available for hire. So overall, these improvements should actually make it a little easier to find what you're looking for directly from the search page on our site. And then next, we have the Recent Activity Channel. And so previously, the Recent Activity Channel was known as From Your Network. And after hearing back feedback from the community at TC and on our ideas forums that you all really, really miss the old activity feed, 
we recently launched the new recent activity channel, which you'll find on our Tableau Public homepage when you log into your Tableau Public account. And in this channel, you'll find the latest updates from authors you follow, including recently published and recently favorited visits. And I also want to point out that as with all of these features, we're continuing to iterate and make improvements to each new release. And soon, we'll be releasing notifications within the recent activity channel. And so these notifications will allow you to easily find um, what's new since you logged into Tableau Public. And then you can see as an example here, the new content dis will display with an orange indicator at the top. So you can stay up to date on the latest updates from your favorite authors. So definitely look out for our launch announcement on our social channels or on our blog when this comes in the coming months. And then another awesome feature that we'll be launching soon is recommended vizs. And how this works is that when you click on a viz, there will be a new content displaying just below the, the details and descriptions. And you'll find 20 recommended vizs directly on the viz homepage for you to explore. And these results are based on search relevancy. So it's now gonna be easier for you to continue your journey on Tableau Public and discover new content without having to actually click back out to the search or homepage. And so as you can see from this example, if you were to search Sherlock Holmes and land on this particular viz, you would find 20 similar vizs on the same topic. So when this launches, all you have to do is click on a viz of your choice, scroll down to the bottom, and then you'll see recommended content so you can continue exploring. And then now for the upcoming feature that I'm personally most excited about, and this is an exclusive first look just for you guys, this is Enhanced Stats. And with this feature, you'll be able to privately view your metrics for the last 30 days in a single place. And for the first time ever, you'll be able to see how many authors have been inspired by your visas and have credited you in their work. So when you log into Tableau Public, there'll be a new tab on your profile called Stats. And from the Stats page, you'll find your metrics for total views, total favorites, total following count, total inspired, and your top five visits all from the last 30 days. And we think this is gonna be a really great way for you guys to see how your visits are performing and really give you insight into the type of content that resonates most with your network. And as I mentioned, after this launches, we're gonna continue iterating on this and making improvements. This is just the first milestone in what we'll be offering to users. And then lastly here, as Eric had mentioned, I wanna tell you guys about a campaign launching in November um, called Data Plus Movies. And you guys may remember Data Plus Music. Well, Data Plus Movies is gonna be even bigger. We've partnered with IMDB to bring you guys the world's largest cinematic data set. And we've created an easy starter kit with a dashboard starter on Tableau Public and step-by-step -step instructions so that anyone, regardless of Tableau knowledge, can participate. And I think it's gonna be really so much fun. All you have to do is just create and share a viz on Tableau Public about the movies you love using the IMDb data set, and we'll send you guys a free t-shirt. We're also in the process of creating a tug in a box. So those of you who want to run a Data Plus Movies project absolutely can. And this is going to include everything from the data sets, presentations, logos, banners, and a few videos to get you started. And then in terms of timing, um, this opportunity is going to run from November 1st all the way up to Tableau Conference at the beginning of May. So you guys will have plenty of time to explore this in more detail and work on your Data Plus movie quiz. Um, and that pretty much sums up this challenge. Definitely stay tuned. We'll have more updates for you guys when this launches in the next couple of weeks. And that's it for me. Thank you. Well, thank you, Olivia. Is the t-shirt a new thing or have you done that with previous challenges? I think we've done this with previous challenges before. Wow. Start your collection today. Right? Awesome. <laughs> thank you. All right. Well, up next is um, the data fam. So I'll turn it over to Preeti. Thank you, Eric. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm excited for this segment. I've been a huge fan of Dennis and Jessica for a while, so I'm excited to host this segment with you all. Uh, Jessica is a data analyst who discovered Tableau in 2014 while she was working in a data science testing role. Jessica is a desktop 
a Tableau Desktop Certified Associate and a Tableau Public Ambassador. She has received Viz of the Day six times. You have to let me know, Jessica, what, what are you putting in those visits six times? Kudos to you. Uh, I certainly enjoy Jessica's philosophy uh, of creating visualizations. Her philosophy is to increase her Tableau competency by making both silly and serious visualizations in her spare time. She's a lead authority in utilizing map layers for non-map based business. It just blows my mind every single time I see you use uh, map layers to end its creativity with it. It's amazing. Hello, Jessica. Hi, Preeti. There you go. Uh, our next presenter with Jessica is uh, Dennis Cal. Uh, by day, Dennis is a social work professor at Carleton University, where he conducts health equity research and teaches courses on community practice, nonprofit management, and research and statistics. By night, he is an aspiring data visualization and map designer. Dennis has an over a decade of experience in statistical analysis and GIS mapping. He first discovered Tableau in November 2020. Dennis is also a Tableau public ambassador and has received Viz of the Day seven times. And I want to make a keynote with both Jessica and Dennis have asked me to make is that though three of the Viz's of the data uh, out of the Viz of the Day they have gotten have been for the Data Fam project that they have collaborated on. So kudos to you guys making it seem that collaboration works and can get a whiz of the day. Hi, Dennis. Hello, everybody. So without uh, further ado, I'm gonna step away. I am gonna hand it over to you, Dennis. Uh, so let's get to talk about the Data Fram project version two and all the things that went behind the scenes. Great. Hello, everybody. I hope you can hear me. Um, I just shared my screen. So let me go to the slide deck. And I will share the slide deck afterwards because we included some worksheets um, that we're going to do a little bit of kind of behind under the hood type of work just to show you some of the features in the in the viz. But this is the, um, you know, I'm we're honored. I'm honored to be presenting. Thank you for the invitation, Temple Public Tug. Um, this has been a 14 month kind of endeavor between Jessica and myself, and I'll talk a little bit about the timeline. Um, but it's been ab an absolute blast. Um, and it's just been fun, really fun tr getting to know the various folks that make up the and, and it's a small sample, but the various folks that make up the, the data fam. And it's just been a joy to, to be a part of this project and engage in it. Um, so just uh, maybe some additional uh, kind of facts. Um, so again, I, my name is Dennis. Um, I, I'm originally from California, but have moved to, Cal, uh, to Ottawa about five years ago. And um, my kind of some fun facts. Um, I like Korean dramas. I like to travel and um, I like maps. All right. And hey, y'all, I'm Jessica Moon. Um, I'm a mom of three. I live in Huntsville, Alabama. I work on a remote project where I use Tableau almost every day. And a uh, fun fact, I take two adult hip hop classes a week which are a blast. So I'm just going to kind of quickly, if, if you haven't seen the Viz, what I'll do is I'll just quickly um, go over the Viz a little bit, just so you can see it. Um, and and I'll, I'll talk through some of the features that we're going to kind of go over. Um, so this, so there's basically six pages to this Viz. Um, sorry, my internet seems to be lagging. Um, so the first page is the landing page. And 
Um, this is where we have silhouettes of everybody. We asked everybody for body, um, body images. Um, and we'll kind of talk through how we put this kind of crowd and how we put together how, um, working with the images, how we work with the images. We turn all the images into cartoons and things like that. So we'll talk a little bit about that, 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 um, some of that, some of that process. Uh, the second page is what we're calling the curvy line page. And it's basically everybody's lined up in a curvy line based on when they started using Tableau. And there's a couple of cool features. Um, 23 of the participants started in 2020 and um, a number of them, 43 of them have published in the past month. Uh, the next one is where we asked in a survey where everybody was from. Uh, originally, and um, so 27 countries were represented in the survey out of 100 uh, people, and 40 members from the United States, and 18, I believe, from India, and so forth. We also asked a number of questions, um, um, like, um, are you team floating? Are you team tiled? Are you light mode versus dark mode? And do you like are you yay or nay on pie charts? And so uh, we displayed that in, in this kind of um, small multiples type of thing. Um, then um, Jessica was able to pull Twitter data for all the participants. And this bee swarm shows um, when um, everybody joined uh, Twitter and the size of, the, of their heads are basically the number of followers that they have. And then finally, at the end, we have kind of a directory of everybody and the information that provided of everybody who participated in the survey. And, and one of the kind of key kind of inspirations for this was we talked about kind of putting together some sort of yearbook. And so we wanted this viz to kind of function like a yearbook where people can see pictures of people and kind of information about them. And so hopefully that kind of played out the way that we had talked about. All right, so a quick timeline of how, and, and, and through this, I'll talk a little bit about some of the inspiration and some of our thinking. So this, it all began in 2022, July, um, over a year ago. And it started with a, a, a tweet by um, Anna. Um, you may know her as Anna Milana, but uh, I think in LinkedIn, she's Anna Reda Castro. Um, she tweeted this this um, infographic. Uh, it's basically um, countries across in, uh, the columns, and then the presidents or leaders at that time. And it's basically a timeline of leadership across multiple countries, including Canada, U.S., Germany, etc. And she she basically asked the question, "Could we do this in Tableau?" And then there was kind of a back and forth between various people. And at one point I thought, oh, maybe this might be a fun project. Um, and Jessica mentioned that she's ready to collab. And I think up to this point, Jessica and I have been kind of interacting somewhat. Uh, we both did Project Help Viz. And so I think there was some interaction there. Um, we were interacting via Twitter as well. Um, and and so, the, so, the, so this all started July 8th. And at some point, you know, during our, as we were messaging back and forth, um, I had seen this poster of timeless characters. So it's basically superheroes, Disney characters, things like that. And it, I think, I believe it's hand drawn. And I thought, would it be cool to do something like this, right? Um, and and this served, and, and you'll notice that we have a curvy line in our viz. This kind of served as the main inspiration. Um, you know, it, it led to us turning people into cartoons it, um, and things like that and working with full body images. It led to us asking people for full body images, which still to, to this day is a scary thing in my mind. Um, and up to this point, you know, I, my main concern was, I, I didn't know, really, I didn't know what I was getting into. My main concern was, oh, we're gonna do something around bachelorette or bachelor, because this, um, you might not know this, but Jessica likes to likes to watch Bachelor and Bachelor, and also visits about it um, consistently. Um, and so it was in July thirteenth, twenty twenty two, when Jessica just threw out this idea, 
and you know, kind of stemming from the the president's head's infographic and the curvy line is why don't we you know do this with the data fam? We ask you know people to send in their pictures, um, full body images, and you know, and, and let's let's vis vis about them. And so this is idea came out over a year ago, and um, I think some of the, some of the message I included in this are just basically our you know I I think our hesitation or our concern or our anxiety around asking people for their full body images. Um, so um, so you know it's just something that I think eventually we you know we felt okay about, but I, I still kind of shudder at the thought that we were asking people for full images. September 16th, this was the, um, the first viz that we did. Um, and what we decided to do is create a survey to get information from people and, and, and put this, um, and then create a pitch, a teaser viz. And then, so th these, this group is basically people that we had some interaction with and we felt comfortable enough to ask uh, for full body images. And so this was the first 17. Um, uh, and, and this one also got visit the, of the day as well. And so from that, you know, um, th there was a lot of excitement initially around that. Um, Anna, again, was a great partner in all of this. She helped us with some of the images. Um, and she also got excited as she was working with images. She was tweeting and posting like images that she was creating, and these came out um, shortly after. This was our second viz, uh, February 9th, um, where um, I think one of the original ideas was to create a social network, and um, Jessica really went ahead and 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 di did this viz. Um, basically based on the one of the questions that we asked, yay or nay on pie charts. And then finally, in July 11, so this is practically, basically a year after we started talking about this, we finally got our 100th um, uh, response. And you'll see right here, it was uh, Matthias, uh, Matthias, I, I, sorry about the pronunciation. Um, and so once we got the hundred response, we just basically closed the survey saying, yes, we got a great, you know, it's a, a nice round number. Um, I, I already was starting thinking about the TV show, the hundred, and we can play off that theme and things like that. And so we closed the survey and then there was a, a, a bunch of work, um, leading up to this, um, in the next couple months leading up to this fizz. Um, which was released or published September 14th. All right. So kind of the next part, now that we've kind of gone through the, the inspiration timeline and um, the viz, um, so we're going to try to kind of show you a little bit about how we created some of the pages or some of the features. Um, and to kind of illustrate that, we're really just going to key in on um, 10 people. Um, so myself and Jessica, the four people, Anna, Maris, Nicole, and Michelle, who played a role in, in, in supporting and, 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 and did some work around um, some of the images and things like that, and the four people involved with this tug today. And so, um, so we'll, we'll, we'll use, the, um, we'll use uh, the, the sample of 10 moving forward. Um, so in kind of just the next couple of minutes, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about kind of creating this map. Um, so the idea behind this obviously was to show where people were from. Once you highlight a circle or a particular country, their images will show up here. Um, and I'm gonna quickly show you. So one of the things, one of my things is, you know, I, I, I really enjoy you know, if you don't know me, I, I like to I, I like to play and work with you know I like to I like maps you know I like looking at maps I like creating maps and one of the things is um, creating maps in a way that you know Tableau wasn't intended to um, but creating maps in a way that you know you can easily do in GIS software and so um, I have a, a like a I post about like you know doing some hacks and things like that here and there. Um, 
Well, basically, um, I, I'm using a uh, kind of a, a hack here, a projection. So I created a shape file that is based on the Robinson projection. And, and Sarah Battersley, and I'll include the link, has a, has a post that shows you how to hack the, the file so that Tableau gets fooled into projecting this image with, you know, in whatever Im oh, projection you want. Um, but, it, you know, instead of using Mercator projection. So it's not, it's not really, it's, it's, it's basically an image, um, but it, it's, it's based on the projection that you create. Like I use QGIS. And so um, I, I created this using the QGIS software. Um, I also created some centroids to match based on the same projection here. And so you can see the projection, uh, the centroids there. Let me... Um, Change the tone a little bit. Okay. Um, and then all, and basically what I'm creating now is um, some um, graduated symbols. To, so the size of the circle represents the, um, the number of people from each of those countries. And so I use uh, basically a count of the names in this case. And then I want to turn this into circles. And then I want to base it on um, the countries here, like so. Okay. There. Um, and then eventually I used a, a parameter to allow me to select each, each, um, each circle. Then, and then that will trigger a label right? Like, so if you go back here, so once I click on the United States, for example, I created another layer that allows me to have the label on top. And then this, this was used to filter another sh worksheet that um, has all the, um, the different um, people as custom, as custom shapes, their headshots. Okay. All right. So then now I'm just going to quickly, I think I have a little more time, quickly go over the images and how we worked on them. Okay. And so, so, you know, the images came in different sizes, different quality. Um, I think Ant was the first image that we got. He like, we asked him and then, you know, that very minute he went outside to the backyard, took a picture and then sent it to us. Right. And so we got pictures like that. We got nice, um, nice professional pictures from people who took pictures at the Tableau conference, you know, things like that. So there was a whole assortment of different images that we got. Uh, Frederick, um, who's from Australia, uh, he gave us one of him running in some race. Um, so, so we got a variety of different images. Um, and so what we did, um, and Jessica did the bulk of this, is we use a number of different tools. So there's a number of tools out there that allows you to take an image and um, either remove the trans, uh, re either remove the background and and or cartoonize the image. And so the idea was, and again, going back to the original curvy line poster, we wanted to kind of mirror that um, and mimic that. And 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 so we created cartoons of everybody, and then we created also silhouettes. So for everybody that was you know sent in a picture, we had their full body images that we cartoonized, removed the transparencies. We also created silhouettes and we also created headshots. Um, of them. And, and Anna and Maris played a big role in that. And obviously there was a number of, of, of bloopers, um, missing arms, missing legs, um, uh, bare feet. Um, Severia sent us one that looked like he was like at a, at a, at a frat party. Um, you know, halos around people. And then I think wor the worst one was um, one of my peace signs, one of the fingers were missing. And so it looked like I was giving the finger to folks. So anyways. And finally, the landing page, I think the inspiration for this, for me at least, was the, the 100. And so this poster kind of, I was trying to kind of use this as the inspiration. And you can see it kind of mirrors that. Um, Jessica, I want I wanted to kind of do something more like this, but Jessica didn't want let me. To my defense, you didn't show me 
You're oh, this one? You would have liked this one? <laughs> because that is, that's pretty great. Well, there were too many people. I couldn't do it with 100 anyways. So anyways, all right. And, and all of this was done in Figma. And I'll show you quickly. My time is up, but I'll show you quickly Figma. Um, so this is, this is Figma. For those who aren't familiar, Figma is a graphic design tool. Um, and in my case, with no limited graphic design you know, experience, it, it's a great tool because it's really easy to use. Um, you know, you can create the um, silhouettes simply by putting a, a, a black rectangle on top of the image like that. Um, and also, I mean, I basically just put people like in, in the image and cr tried to create a nice crowd where no, nobody was blocking each other and things like that. Um, and then once we had the image set, um, Jessica is going to go over how we get the, 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 the X, Y coordinates so that we can actually then use custom shapes to represent people. Right. And I'm done. Except I don't know how to get out of here. How do I get out of here? Okay. Stop sharing. Okay, there you go. I was trying to find my browser. Thank you, everybody. So while uh, Jessica shares the screen uh, quickly, Dennis, uh, it has been hilarious. Uh, I love the chat. It lit up. People were really laughing. And uh, uh, we love the behind the scenes scoop that you gave us and the labor of the love that this came through. Uh, we did have one question from Luke Abraham, which I think Mehraz and Jessica have already answered. The question was, any tool recommendations for making transparent backgrounds or isolating shapes? Yeah, so I think it was kind of a mixed bag and it depended on the image, right? So in some cases, like I use Figma, there's a remove background. Um, I think it, it is remove.bg um, has a, a plugin that you can use in Figma. You can know there's a number of different um, online applications, but in some cases we we asked Anna to just we she had to use Photoshop to really kind of drill down because there were some cases where where we got halos around people and things like that, so it was a bit more challenging for some images. Yeah, great, thank you. And Maharaj did answer saying Canva and Remove .bg were the resources. Thank you. Take away, Jessica. Alrighty. Hi, uh, can y'all see my screen? Can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna go over a couple other technical aspects to the Viz. Thank you, Dennis. That was awesome. We've had so much fun on this. All right, step one. Let's annotate the points. Here's where I call out thank you, Mayros, because um, when it, there were a hundred he went through and painstakingly did this process, uh, sent us the Excel sheet with the image name, the latitude, the longitude, and the row number. And the way that he did that was I sent him a dashboard with the background image mapped and an example annotation. You right click, you annotate point, and then you can insert your X and Y or latitude, longitude, like this. Row was also important to get the sorting correct. So now I'm going, well, first I'll say, brought that into the data. There are some Python programs that were involved in getting data from the API. In one of my slides, I linked to some of that code. Um, not a professional programmer, but I did confirm with someone that, that they'll work. So you can check those out if you're interested. Let's make a landing page real quick. All right, that's fine. First thing I always do when I work with map layers, which I tend to do anymore, is an origin calc. I do just make point zero, zero, double click, add it as a second layer, and then switch rows and columns. 
two layers is important if you want to switch rows and columns and work the X comma Y way that just makes sense in my brain. Now, because I don't want this image to show up every time I'm using latitude and longitude, I am made a string calculation here that literally just says landing. And I'm going to go back to background images, to the data source. I'm going to add an image. I'm going to find it here in my downloads, the version without the people. And I mapped it from minus one to one, minus one to one. Options, we want to lock the aspect ratio always show entire image and we also want to add that criteria of demo landing is landing okay apply there she is we also don't want people to zoom and pan on the map so i'm going to go to map options and take away all of these check marks showing the header and since i'd already um, brought in the uh, coordinates i create a calc with my landing x and my landing y i bring that in as a layer and i know that i also need to break those points up so i'll put like name on detail all right, and there were certain criteria to show the images. So I will demo that calc. The first thing I do when um, having two different sets of images is um, assign all of the regular pictures and all of the um, silhouettes at once. So I'm not bouncing back and forth um, with different parameter options. So this one, this statement up here is false. I'm going to put this onto shape. Edit the shape and I'll find out of my million shapes, the ones I'm looking for. And I'll get the silhouettes from this folder. I got to know our subjects quite well. You can probably find them in the dark. Okay. Let's get the size. Yes, Luke, exactly. And the size isn't quite big enough, even maxed out. So I have this boost calculation. I just do a min of 100, put that on size. And now they're just maybe a smidge too big. Awesome. Now I'm gonna go back to that calculation. I'm gonna comment out the false. Comment in the true. And assign these. I love Eric's comment, Jessica. He said you will have easy time spotting us at T24. I will. I will. Well, I, I recruited some of them there. It's like there's no excuse. I've got my phone camera right here. All right. And then finally, I'll comment this out. and uncomment the main calculation where I'm looking at a parameter that was created and based on the selection, um, the true false statement will evaluate against certain like in statements here. I'll blow this up a little bit. So click okay. And now just Dennis and I are um, showing 
and as you change the parameter only certain people will be showing but i just noticed that um, mayros isn't sorted properly so another thing i will do real quick is i will sort on a field which is um, landing row do a min and yep there that's better so step three is creating the landing page and i also point out that um, dynamic zone visibility is used in this it's used all over the viz so um there's an opportunity to play with it. Um, one of the first things we do is uh, send a different number to our landing page parameter. When you click the arrow and it disappears. Another um, dynamic zone visibility feature is when you click single person, it brings out um, this parameter here. So in layout, you can control visibility using and use one of your true false statements. All right, next, create a timeline. I was so excited when Dennis showed me the curvy timeline with um, all the cartoons because I liked the idea that there were points on the curve, which you don't see in Tableau as much. Um, I figured using Python would take some of those calculations outside of Tableau. So the dashboard would be more performant as we added sheets. And um, I employed the smartest person I know to help with the program. And here's a picture of my dad at my parents' kitchen with my drawing, um, hashing out the trig that he said it had been about 50 years, but we managed to get it together. Um, I linked to the code, this is on my Tableau public, and there's also a dashboard that kind of um, explains the different variables in the program. So you can understand um, what's um, being asked. All right, data fam table. Um, this was the hardest part for me really, um, was getting the image roll to work, getting the size right so all the images would show up. And then once they showed up, all the images were different sizes. So I had to figure out how to resize the images, rescrape the links. Um, and then towards the end, uh, Dennis was like, why don't we do something else for the directory? I was like, no, no. <laughs> A lot has been put into this, so. And then to put it together, um, we have the different dynamic zone visibility. I, I added a connections in here to have a third option, but a parameter action acts on a filter and there's uh, three true false statements up here. So, and then if you were to bring in a landing page, bring it, size it just so, get rid of things, uh, bring in the arrow, set the um, action off the arrow, which passes zero, then that will collapse and show the viz. And I don't wanna step on Emily's time. So um, I guess if there are any questions, get to those. Yes, we do have a couple of those. The first one comes from Luke Ibrahim. He was wondering when it comes to signing coordinates, was it trial and error 
part of seeing what's nice or how it does not overlap or there was a method to this. Jessica, do you want to let me take this or? Okay, I'll take it. Well, I'll start it. Um, so the crowd was created. Um, so for example, the landing page, um, we created the, the, the crowd in Figma and, and basically got it to where we thought it would look really good. I mean, that, that, that it looked kind of the way we wanted. And then once we got, once we went back to Tableau, I think the latitude and longitude were based on kind of the middle of each image. Is that correct, Jessica? Right. And yes. so, so, and so, you know, it was really based on kind of what it looked like in Figma. And then we, we would try to be consistent. Uh, Maris did all of this, right? So he can speak to it as well, uh, where he basically found the X, Y coordinates of everybody's mid, midpoint. And, and the crowd was the same way. I mean, the, the curvy line was the same way, sorry. Okay, cool. Uh, we do have another question from Van, Val Veller, which has been answered, but I'm gonna put it out anyways. You can control a parameter using dynamic visibility. The, the one where you showed how to do the controls, they were wondering if we could control the parameter using that. And yes, it, uh, you can do that with the dashboard object with dynamic zone visibility. So I think that question got answered. Thank you, Jessica and Dennis. It was such a great uh, presentation. Uh, you did so much with the community. It it shows it. it one final question I have for you before I let you, both of you go is how does collaborations of this size work? What is the awesome sauce that you both have got brewing? Uh, I think, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's very clear that Jessica is the brains of this among the two of us. Um, I think what was really cool was being able to like get an idea, like we, you know, either of us would get an idea. So for example, that curvy line poster of, of the, the the different various timeless characters and we like, could we do that, right? And, and you know, I think Jessica would go, you know, do her thing and then it would come back and, and we're like, okay, yeah, it's doable, right? And so I, I think that was kind of a, a, kind of a cool element of our collaboration where we, you know, we were, could be as creative as possible and then Jessica would go figure it out. <laughs> oh, goodness. I, I thought, you know, it's kind of like improv where one of us would have an idea and then the other would be like, yes. And uh, like Dennis sent the picture of the silhouettes. He's like, this could be a landing page. I'm like, yes. And they're actually shapes. We um, dynamically show people being visible. So. It's just the back and forth. Yeah, uh, I, I think the key of communication is the key. And I, I clearly see that you both enjoy working with each other. So thank you all. And thank you for everybody who supported Maras, Anna, and if I, Michelle. There are a couple other people I'm probably forgetting, but great event. Thank you again, Jessica and Dennis, for this amazing presentation. Now I'm going to hand it over to Agata and Emily for the next segment. Thank you so Thank you. All right, I have the pleasure of introducing Emily, um, who is a senior data analyst at Disney. Uh, she loves people, learning, and Tableau. Emily was a classical flute performance major at Rowan University uh, and discovered Tableau in 2016 during her first data analytics role. She is a Tableau public ambassador, a two-time Tableau Iron Viz competition runner-up, and has received Viz of the Day twice. Uh, today, we'll be talking about uh, Emily's Color Studies Viz, which placed top 10 in the 2022 Iron Viz and received Viz of the Day. So I will turn it over to you, Emily. Thanks, Agata. I'm just going to share my screen real quick for everyone. Hi, I'm Emily. Um, and I'm here to talk about my Color Studies Viz. Um, 
So some more fun facts about, about me because I live a fun life. Uh, I've been, as I got to mention, I've been live, laugh, loving Tableau since December 2016. I live in New Jersey and I always say I live in New Jersey. One, because I do live in New Jersey, but sometimes I, it depends on where I am in New Jersey. Sometimes I'm in North Jersey, right outside New York, where I live. And then there are other times where I'm in South Jersey, right outside of Philadelphia, where my parents and I grew up. So I'm never lying if I just say I'm in New Jersey and I just don't claim a city. Everyone's happy and I'm honest, which is what I want to be. Um, and then I'm a woman who loves her hobbies. So <laughs> I love pottery, astrology, and botanical gardens. You can see on the photo on the left is me at Kew Gardens um, when I was visiting London this summer. Um, and then you see me kind of trying to make a cylinder. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't work out in the bottom right photo um, of me at pottery on the wheel. And then you'll see in the middle are photos of my family, my parental units, my mom and dad, my sister, and the love of my life, our family dog, Kuya Ponce. Um, so yeah, so let's talk about this viz. Um, Color Studies is an analysis off of a friend's photography. Um, it, the photos were taken from 2016 through 2019, and they were, all, they were a series of photos of um, concert photography, so like live performances. Um, this screenshot is a snippet <laughs> of the viz because she's so wide, she's 10,000 pixels, because I went a little bananas on this viz. Um, so I'm gonna kind of walk through some of the components of it, the design of it, how I kind of brought this all to life, the many, many iterations for it, um, but feel free as you kind of hear me narrate and give kind of all the little inside scoop, feel free to kind of go through the viz as well. Um, and I'll give a demo of the viz at the very end. So cool, yes, 10K pixel crew. I never knew until this viz that 10,000 pixels. So much, it can be so much and so little at the same time. So here is a snippet of some of the photos that I ended up using in my data set. Um, you can see very wide set it, um, photos retained from 2016 through 2019 by photographer Chelsea Pineda, as, um, which she considers one of her more complete series because um, it was a very specific time when she was working as a concert photographer in the New York City area with some photos taken in Philadelphia. Um, yeah. So I want to talk through the data set inspiration for this. Um, my Viz stands on the giant, on the shoulders of two amazing Viz giants. The first one is Harry Potter and the Magic of Color by Kate Schaub. Um, incredibly foundational. I, if it wasn't for this Viz, I A, wouldn't have had the idea to adapt it with Chelsea's photography. B, I wouldn't have any idea how to get the pixels. Like I learned the whole methodology, the foundation of this, of my Viz is really built on the shoulders of Kate's Viz. Um, and in addition, I get design inspiration and get concepts in the tooltip, the abstract square unit charts that I use in the viz, and then the general layout design of the bottom navigation bar were ultimately derived from Kate's work. Um, I'm a really big fan, go look at it. I think it's, it's just a really sublime piece of work. And then on the right, you'll see the screenshot of the website that Kate used, as well as I did to pull the pixels, the hex colors, the RGB B value, so the red, green, um, blue values of each of the photos and um, photo colors and the hex colors, um, which you'll see translates into the rest of it and what I ultimately analyze. Um, so cool, yeah. So I start going through, I start inputting these photos um, that I found off of Chelsea's photography portfolio. I put them through the, the website app that I found through Kate's um, vids, as well as the settings that she used. And then I get these outputs. Outputs, And I'm gonna call out the outputs that were the most important for me. It was RGB values, again, as I mentioned, which is columns I, J, K. And then there were hex codes, which is in column P. And then, um, which is the significant colors, like the most significant colors the app found within a photo. And then at column N is the proportion, the pixel number, which ultimately I got the proportions of where that color um, makes up in that photo. So 
I and it was very easy. Like I will say this the data set for this is pretty simple at the first turn. Like I at least had like I picked when I first built the data set out, I think I used like five to ten photos just to like build out the the framework for how I'm gonna do the data itself. So I can at least start like playing around with it, making some iterations and whatnot. And ultimately, um, this is just a snippet. It ends up becoming a very wide data set, not very tall because it was only 258 rows because I only used 21 photos, which Chelsea and I agreed was probably the most comprehensive um, set of color of photos to use for this analysis. Um, it ends up becoming very, very wide, not very tall. Um, but I had a bunch of columns and the columns would be like image title, alias, the date it was taken, where it was, it was it in Philadelphia, was it in New York City? What was the venue orientation? So was it like landscape or a portrait? Just trying to understand and quantify and document these photos um, in a real scientific way. Because again, it's art. So art is very subjective. So trying to like get as quantifiable as possible was really key to creating this data set. Um, I also have a link of the data set if anyone wants to look through it and kind of create their own and get their own inspiration. Go ahead, go wild, because I mean, I get inspired by others and I would love it if others were inspired by me. So moving on. So once I had the data set, I was at least able to start designing, right? I had a pretty simple data set. Um, and boy, did I iterate. Um, Dennis and Jessica in their talk, they talk a lot about iterative design and my viz is no different. Um, how did I go from V1, which is on the left, you'll see here, to what is ultimately the final viz. Um, and the answer is, I just kept throwing things at the wall and seeing what stuck and hope for the best with a lot of help from feedback and hoping for the best. So V1, you'll see on the left, not a lot going on. I had a very simple data set. I've probably used what, like 10, 12 photos. I, right at the gate, I wanted to do a ternary chart, which would show the distribution of green, red, and blue values for each color. Um, I think this is a really beautiful way of using a ternary chart for, um, to describe color in a data set. Um, but not really a lot going on, right? It was just like, it was an idea, it was a concept. Um, but you'll see how something, ideas and concepts from V1 make it all the way to the final base. So jump ahead to V7, which is on the right. You'll see that I kind of went from a, for a tall viz um, for a portrait viz, so top to bottom. You'll see that I had a navigation pane, very similar to Kate Schaub's um, work, and a navigation pane on the left. I started pl playing with containers and um, and having having just, it's almost like a pedal chart. Like I just wanted to play around with the layout. Um, I kind of knew I, by this point, I wanted to be like, oh, I want to give each photo their opportunity to shine, that kind of thing. But it wasn't really like, there wasn't really much to say. Like, I didn't really have much to say either yet. Um, so then, you know, when you have a new viz, you start asking around for feedback and start talking it through. Um, I was very fortunate. I was talking to Bridget Cogley at the time. Um, and she pointed out, she was just like, what's the point of this viz? Like, I want to learn more, but like, this is a cool data set. Like, what's the story you're trying to tell? So then I got back to the drawing board and I was like, what's the story I want to tell? And then I, this is the second Viz Giant my Viz stands on top of design wise. It's Sam Parsons' Rivers of Time. Um, no one does, I've never done left or right storytelling for a Viz and no one does it quite like Samuel Parsons. He's, he's great, he's the best. Um, so when I realized I ultimately, you know, and thinking, I was like, well, why don't I make my viz kind of like a gallery show? And what's the gallery? It's reading left to right, you walk along the museum, yada, yada. Um, <laughs> so I thought of Samuel's Rivers of Time, uh, again, very heavily influenced on the layout design because I've never done a left to right viz before. So like, of course, I'm going to look at how someone else did it to kind of dissect and learn because that's, that's how I learned Tableau. I don't know about everyone else, but I learned Tableau by dissecting everyone's work and then reapplying to mine. Um, in addition, similar to Kate's, the bottom navigation bar was ultimately inspire, inspired by Sam's work. So taking components, stealing like an artist, but crediting very loudly that, um, that I where my sources and ideas came from. 
so moving on. So I had kind of an idea. So what does it look like when applied to version seven? How to, seeing this incredible biz by Samuel Parsons, where do I go from here? So then I start iterating again. Now we're on version eight. You'll see that I'm starting to kind of play around. I'm, this is my first step into the left to right biz. Um, storytelling, still getting more components. Now that it's getting wider and I made it taller, I'm, gonna, I'm able to put in more images of the photo itself. That was feedback I got was like, well, where are these beautiful photos that, you're, that the photographer had taken? So I started incorporating it in there. Um, but still not quite right. Still working on it, still working away. So what happens in the next iteration? All right, I switched the color schemes because the gray on gray wasn't a lot for me. Just needed a little more depth to the color. Um, I start finally writing in things because writing is very hard for me. Um, and so this this is around the time I start going to the Iron Biz Feedback Initiative, which given that right now it's Iron Biz season for 2024, big shout out to Sarah Bartlett's uh, Iron Biz Feedback Initiative. If you're entering Iron Biz this year, please, uh, please sign up for a feedback session. I had so much, I, had, I got a lot out of it last the year I competed. And this is, I'm going to tell you guys some of the feedback I had gotten when I went through it. So here's the version 11. So we're not quite at like version 12, 13, which is the final viz version. But you'll see that I had I had some layout issues, which is kind of what I got from the feedback initiative. You'll see that I have the left to right of like the live music concert series, seeing music color. You go through the entire gallery left to right. But then I had this kind of like awkward like jump from after about the artist and you have to go back to the beginning of reading left and then go left to right again to see the photo gallery um which ultimately like kind of just didn't work because you you know intuitively you just want to keep going right when you're reading left to right um i also around this time was kind of like oh maybe i should have an interactive piece and the photos should be an interactive scroll ultimately i discarded that idea because i started having this idea of being like, well, what if I ever wanted to print this viz out? Like this viz, what if this viz became like a gallery for like, or a poster for, for the photographer? Like kind of started having more of like an out of like, not just in Tableau public experience ideation, but like outside of it. Like what is, how does this piece of work live beyond just Tableau public? Um, so yeah, so with all those thoughts in mind, then I do the switch. I do one more layout switch, which is ultimately where we, ultimately where we landed. Um, I do the left to right viz. Um, again, this is just a snippet because it's she's so wide. Um, I move the gallery to the very end, all the way at the very end of the viz. I add this bottom listeners guide all the way at the bottom, um, which is an, another really neat idea I got from the feedback session was to include include almost like a podcast of the viz itself. Um, so that way, as you're going through the viz, you also hear like commentary from me, whether I'm reading out loud the text or giving you just extra scoops behind the viz. Um, the idea came from the wonderful Emily Kuhn. And then it kind of goes along with my gallery idea because what do you do when you're at, I don't know about you guys, everyone, I don't know about you folks, but when I go to a museum, <laughs> I always love having those like docent guides to like get me through each of the, um, get me through all of the gallery showings and um, pay attention to all the little details. And that's kind of what I thought the listener's guide would be. Um, I, have, I have a tutorial somewhere on my website on if you wanna do it. It's, it could be as simple or as complex as you want it. I, because I've never done this before, I decided to do it all in one take. I don't recommend doing it all in one take. I recommend doing it in a little chunk for your sanity and especially if you're a video or camera shy like I can be um but it was a really and it's all done through like a video recording so it's a way of getting outside of Tableau but still enhancing the overall experience um something that I learned after this this was made was um not only was it accessible, which was one of the key points of why I wanted to add this in and was accessible so that way if necessarily you couldn't read um, you can see the screen. You could still have an audio experience um, with the Viz. Um, but for my friends who don't 
lived in this data world that we live in, they were like, oh my God, it's like you're holding my hand through a gallery and you're pointing out all the things I should be paying attention to. Um, and that's the biz. So before I kind of dive into the demo, I got anyone, does anyone have any questions before we kind of switch gears and go into the biz itself? I don't see any questions on the Q&A, um, but I'm curious to know, I know it's, you know, it's Iron Viz um, season right now. Mm -hmm. um, so for yours, were, did you have the idea for this Viz before you heard the theme announcement or did the kind of theme announcement inspire the idea for the Viz? Oh, I totally didn't have this. Like the idea came strictly from the Viz announcement, the, the theme announcement. The theme was visualizing the arts, um, and I remember seeing the theme and just like, sometimes I get ideas right out the gate, but this one was unique where I had to like sit on it for a while. Like I was on Tableau public and I was scrolling through when I found Kate's incredible biz, um, which was so foundational. And then that was kind of where the gears started turning. Originally, I wasn't even going to look at Chelsea's photography. I was trying, I was, I thought of like, I'm a big fan of Monet's work. I'm a big fan of impressionism painting. So I thought maybe impressionism. And then I was like, I don't know enough about impressionism. I just think it's really pretty. I don't, I don't feel confident, confident or comfortable making a biz about that. Um, I follow this other photographer, Anna Marie Tendler. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll do it on her. Um, but then she's like really famous. And I, I felt weird doing, I just felt weird. So then I was like, okay, no, I need maybe someone a little more direct. And then I thought of Chelsea because, um, not only did I have a direct line to her as an artist, um, but it just, it, that that way, if I had questions about it, I felt a little more comfortable asking her about it. I felt a little more confident in my analysis. Yes, it's almost easier to tell the story and you have the rights for the pictures. So that's all great. Yeah. <laughs> that was also <laughs> why I felt, I felt very bold. Um, I felt very bold in using the photography because I had the explicit permission from the photographer herself which is a very, very fortunate position to be in. Awesome, yeah, cool. dive in, cool. dive into the demo. <laughs> all right, off we go. Okay, as I mentioned, she's so wide. So you've all seen this first snippet. Um, you'll see that I have kind of like guide, the listener's guide down below. If you're like, what is this listener's guide, Emily? There are all these little pop-up containers throughout the viz giving you a little information on what you're about to interact with. Um, the listener's guide, you can either click it. I won't click it because then it'll pl start playing and then I'll go into a tech freakout. Um, or you can scan it with your with because it's a QR code. So you can scan it on your mobile if you're looking at this on your on your desktop and whatnot. Um, from there, we move on to seeing music in color. Um, you'll see this turning ternary plot, which is all of the pixels and hex colors in the of all of the data set. You'll see this information guide, which I'm particularly proud of. I'm just, I'm proud of all of the like user guide and handholding I put into this biz in particular. Um, if you click on it, pop out comes out, gives you a kind of brief overview of the ternary chart, the data that you're looking at, pay attention to any tool tips I have call out, and then you head back to the viz. Um, I put this in place because I don't know about you, but when I first looked at a ternary chart, I kind of didn't understand it at first. And so I just kind of assume if I didn't understand it right out the gate, that means other people probably don't understand it. And I'd rather like over communicate than under communicate in those learning scenarios. Um, so that's why there are all these little information guides before every new chart section. Cause you know, you know everyone comes from different places when looking at a data set. Um, from there, then I kind of group all the colors that I get. Um, I got in the data set, I grouped them into primary categories of brown, blue, purple, green, pink, red, yellow, um, and kind of do just a little analysis, just trying to understand like why some groups are used a lot more than others. Um, I was really surprised that brown had the highest unique uh, colors. And then I was like, oh wait, skin. Skin is in the brown group, like duck. Brown is beautiful. Um, to finally moving on to a perspective on change. So I did an analysis comparing the artist's first photo to her final photo, which is kind of neat um, to just see like that three, four year growth um, and how styles, style, styles can change over time. 
Um, and then I end the vids. Well, I end the like near part of the, you know, the first half of the vids by um, just kind of understanding the uh, doing an analysis on the number of colors and mapping it across over time. And we kind of see it's a gradual decline. It doesn't always smooth, smoothly go straight from like point A to point B. Like if you look at the first and last photo, they look very starkly different, but all the photos in between are kind of a gradual moving towards the more monochromatic color scheme as opposed to the very high contrast, many different photo, um, any different color groupings in the first photo. Um, and then that's it. And then we end, truly end the viz because the viz has so many things packed in with the photo gallery of each photo getting its own little mini spotlight. I have a navigation below calling out all of the inspiration of this viz, uh, the data sources, so how I got this data set together, image assets, and then finally just a big thank you because it took a village to get this viz out the gate. It takes a village just for me to make anything, I feel like. Um, you know, you always love having your support network and um, that's it. That's the viz. It's awesome. It's great. Um, so if anybody has any questions for Emily, please feel free to, to shout them out in the, uh, in the Q and a or the chat. Um, what, what do you think Emily was the most challenging aspect of creating this viz for you? Um, that's a great question. I think there's, I'm, I'm going to answer it. I'm going to answer that question in three different categories because, you know, I love to just complicate things. Um, the first I would say design wise, I was something that I like looking back and preparing for this talk, I was kind of taken aback by was how many iterations I went through. Like there, I think that is the hard thing as designers. Uh, did you did you take through. like screenshots of your iterations? Cause that's one thing yeah. I wish I did that I don't do. <laughs> yeah, I, I saved them as V1. My hidden tab is just like, there are so many things in my hidden tab and it's because it's all the different iterations that, I, that I'll keep. Um, so I think design wise, the thing that was so hard about this viz was there had to be like a real fearlessness in the iteration process. Like I had all the pieces, but I just kind of had to keep going even though I was like, at one point I got it, I was like, I'm never gonna finish it, this viz. I'm never gonna finish this viz. Um, so I think design wise, that is the hardest thing was you, um, there had to be like a fearlessness and just being like, you know what, this layout isn't working, this component isn't working, either scrap it or just move on from it and get it done. Um, I think data wise, the hardest thing is anytime, anything with art and interpretation in general, I think it's whether or not like your interpretation of like this color or whatever is actually valid. Like it, it gets, I think it's a, more of a statement of like qualitative, the nuance of qualitative versus quantitative, right? Like quantitative, you can't argue that we had a hundred sales on a Thursday, but people can argue like, is that really, is, is this grouping a brown? Is, are all these colors brown? So I think that kind of nitpick of like critically thinking of critically questioning your anything that's qualitative is just hard um and then finally the storytelling this is such a rich data set i had a really hard time finding the story i have a habit of losing the plot <laughs> sometimes because i kind of love all the little details so i feel like storytelling wise it was kind of hard because there were so many details and so many things we want i wanted to cover in this phase that having to step back and kind of just be like, well, what's the overall story of this? Took a fair amount of iterations and talking through and walks around my apartment and walks around the park to kind of get an idea. So I well, think that- together awesomely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really proud of this. Um, yeah. All right, well, thank you so much. I will turn it over to Eric. Well, thank you. Those were awesome. Um, I mean, I realize I'm not putting enough time in my visit. You guys are just uh, amazing in what you're doing. And I mean, and the amount of time you're working on it. But let's go. We've got some prizes to give away. So here we go.
For the winners, if you will email tableau.public.tug at gmail.com, we will reach out to you and get the information we need to submit the forms. I've entered everybody who is in the chat today, so let's see who the first winner is. Like Stuart, Stuart Meacock, $50 gift certificate from the Tableau store. Email tableau.public.tug at gmail.com. All right, well, let's remove Stuart and do it again. See who's going to be number two. And Kelly Gilbert. Nope. Oh. It went forward one more. Kristen Sterling. Hope I said that right. All right. Well, thank you. Again, email tableau.public.tug at gmail.com and we will get you your gift certificate. So next up, we want to do our little news roundup. Uh, if you haven't heard, Tableau Conference 2024 is going to be in San Diego from April 29th through May 1st. The Tableau Class of Ambassadors have been announced for 2023, so check those out uh, on the Tableau website. Dreamforce announced Tableau Pulse and Einstein Copilot. There are some really good uh, videos on uh, Dreamforce website about those two products, uh, Pulse, I believe, should come out before the end of the calendar year. And then Einstein Copilot will probably have a big announcement at TC24. You probably don't want to miss that. It looks pretty cool. And as Olivia said, Tableau Data Plus Movie Challenge in November. Huge, huge, huge data set. Uh, it's just amazing that Amazon has let us play with that. So. Uh, you know, sharpen up your skills. I'm not sure how much time they're going to let us have with it. Probably not a year or so. So, uh, Dennis, you're going to have to probably work faster this time. Uh, but it's going to be awesome. Next month, we are going to have more discussing his related dog breeze Viz of the day and Nicole Clausen and I want to say Oana talking about their um, climate change past due. And it was a Viz the Day uh, from later, earlier this year. So join us for those two. Let me post the RSVP into the chat. And you can go out there and sign up on Bevy today. If that went through. All right, and then finally, if you want your own Viz of the Day, build a Viz that is timely and topical, spots like the diverse Tableau community, includes a novel chart type or Tableau trick, I think we saw plenty of that today, communicates a key insight or story, we saw that too, and highlights new features. They used uh, dynamic zone visibility all over the place in those visits. And finally, it needs to be visually stunning, which both of the ones we saw today were. And the ones next month are too. So join us uh, next month for how those were built. And finally, if you need or have a favorite visit of the day that satisfies all those that you would like to see us cover in a future users group, uh, the URL public tug viz nomination form uh, will get you to the form where you can nominate it. And shameless self promotion is definitely accepted. So uh, let us know if you'd like to present. Well, thank you, everybody. I'm going to stop the recording.